coming up on this episode of Nintendo Cartridge Society. Dragalia Lost, more like Dragalia Low Battery. Hey, didn't we already do a joke like that? It's dangerous to go alone, so the Nintendo Cartridge Society goes with you. Welcome to Nintendo Cartridge Society. My name is Patrick Ellers. I am joined, as always, by my co-host, Mark Mitchell. Mark, how's it going? It's going pretty good. Uh, we have a task ahead of us today. We are going to... This is our review discussion of Dragalia Lost, the new Nintendo mobile game. The first uh, from a new like IP. It is not a Mario game. This is not a Zelda game. The first from... Uh, Nintendo's new partnership with Psy Games. That's right. The previous ones had been created by DNA. Right. That's right. Um. So we've we've got a, we've got a lot a lot ahead of us, Mark. So I think we need to slow down first. E- let's ease into this. Yes. Let's, I mean, first of all, like, how are we doing? Uh, I feel comfortable. How are, How are you? I'm also feeling comfortable. It is you know a little warm for an October evening. Uh, we've been turning the air conditioning on. We've been turning the air conditioning off. Um. It's uh, it's sad to see it go every time we turn it off. We were just singing "Candle in the Wind" to it, um, and to each other. And to, well, yes, <laughs> I think that goes without saying. <laughs> um, Mark, we also have some other things that we just do on this show. One of which is we make lists of things, definitive lists, and we are going to be doing that shortly. That's right. On November eighth, mm-hmm. we are going to be coming up with the eight definitively best. NES games of all time. And here's the thing. We're only going to allow one game per series That's right. onto this list. So Dragon Warrior 1, maybe. But then you can't put Dragon Warrior 2 on there. Super Mario Brothers 2, uh, sure. USA Edition. Yeah, love it. But what about Super Mario Brothers 3? And look, 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 look. Do both of those games maybe belong on this list? Probably. But they're not allowed. Based on the arbitrary rules that's that right. we set for ourselves. Counterindicated. And that you have to live by. But that's why we need your help. We need your help. So if you could write in with your suggestions for the eight best NES games of all time, write it in to Nintendo Cartridge Society at, at gmail.com gmail. and contribute to the list. Also, if you just want to tell us one game that you don't want us to put there, you could do that too. Uh, any, however you want to contribute is great with us. We love it. Castlevania 3 shouldn't be on this list. Maybe that's what you say. I don't know. You, you gotta, tell us. You got to tell us. Otherwise, I don't know. Maybe Castlevania 3 goes on this list. The power is yours. Here's the other thing you should do Yeah, when you're writing us that email. Go ahead and include your mailing address because... So you've pitched this multiple times. I would like these to be separate emails. <laughs> I get confused easily. We are talking, of course, about the Sonic Forces borrowing program. If you would like to borrow my copy of Sonic Forces... All you need to do is write in with your mailing address to Nintendo Cartridge Society at, at gmail.com. gmail.com. Now, Mark's trying to say that you should include this in an email about something else. But if so, I might not see it. The easiest thing to do is include Sonic Forces in the subject of your email and then don't write other stuff. <laughs> you can send me two emails in one day. I don't think that's weird. Mark, do you think that's weird? No, I, I, I think that happens all the time. It, yeah. That people send me two emails in one day? Yeah. Yeah, it, it, you're right. It does happen quite a lot. Mark, are you ready to get into it? We got to talk about Dragalia Lost. Yeah, I think we should do it. All right, let's do it. Okay, so this game came out last week. Uh-huh. It's, I guess, on Thursday, right? So it's been out for a, a week now. We mm-hmm. are recording this uh, earlier in the week, so we've only had a, a couple days to... Uh, mess around with it. Um, how what? Wh- how how would you pitch this game to someone? How how do you explain what this is? Um, I can help if it's difficult. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a mobile RPG. Yeah. I think that pretty well sums it up. It's a mobile JRPG. Uh, yeah, but the gameplay, like the actual uh, like exploration and combat, feels very uh, like. 
I like Diablo, but you're tapping. Oh, okay, sure, yeah. Um, and you know, it's it's not in the same way of like where you're picking up gear, um, that you are then able to like equip, you know, what while it's happening, and you're not really managing, you know, like potions or spells or whatever. There are a few special abilities that you trigger like as you're fighting through stuff with more tapping. With more tapping, of course, it's all it's all like tapping. Sometimes it's a tap and hold, um, and you dodge around with like swiping around on the thing, um. But so that I mean that that's that's basically it, right? That that's what this game is, um, and I think it's like two big selling points, or like for me, the two things that seem like front and center are um, its story and its uh, multiple progression paths that uh, you can level up characters and weapons and dragons oh boy can you level stuff up in this game you can level up look if you can imagine a dimension of a character or thing you can level that up um in in this game you can level up dragons you can level up your relationship with dragons that's right worm cards i mean there's a lot there are so many systems and even in like the direct where they talked about it yeah. Um. And all the different systems. I remember feeling like this is going to be too much. Yes. And uh, kind of the nice thing, mm-hmm. in, in at least my experience, is that you can ignore what you want to ignore. Yes. Because th- there are tons of handy optimize buttons in this game. Oh, so many optimize buttons. <laughs> Where it's basically like, uh, and it, it, so much so that you can like auto run through dungeons. Yes. There, there is a, an auto play and enable auto play. Uh, option that at any time you can just say, all right, I've picked my team. They're just going to go through here. So if you really want to like dive into specific systems, you can. And then all the other stuff, you can kind of just coast through. Yeah. And really like th- there's, there's no point and it like no point in the upgrades um, where uh, you don't have the option to just hit optimize. However, optimize will in many cases use all available resources like right at that moment. Yeah, absolutely. And and that is kind of like the trade-off, right? Yeah. It removes the agency from you. Right. Um it will make what it thinks is the most optimal choice. But I think that that's a fair um well, but it's like it's, give and take. It's the most optimal choice for what is in front of you right then. Yeah. So like <laughs> if you are looking at a char- one character and you're like I want to just upgrade him using you know, whatever the like gold gems or whatever they are. There are also so many different things. So you can many use different, to yeah, tons <laughs> of them, different items. Um, and if you just say optimize, it'll use all of them, even though like, oh, maybe you wanted to spend a couple on this guy and then like go over and upgrade another guy. It's just gonna dump them all in. Well, that guy. but that's why you are able to do that, right? Yes, of course. If you wanted to, right? Um, but it, there, it's kind of operating under the assumption that if you're using the optimize button, you're not that concerned about the optimal use of right or materials at least, or at least your your you are gi- yes you're right you're you are, giving up that agency yes, exactly right. you are ceding it to the to the computer and saying computer you know better than i but before we get into like the specific systems or talking about like the game and the plot and all that kind of stuff yeah um going into this like before the game was released i was not looking forward to this at all i was not anticipating this game i right. did not care I yeah, I was even a little bit dreading when last week when uh, we were like as we often do we get to an end of a, end of the topic episode and we could sort of stare at each other dead eyed and go what do you want to talk about next week? Mark said I think we got to do Dragalia Lost and I remember thinking oh, do we have to <laughs> do we have to play this game which is going to be a a mobile game which we don't really play and be like a way Japanese RPG that like we also don't really play with some rare exceptions. Um. So yeah, I would. Uh, did you say dreading that you were dreading this game, or just not? I'm not like dreading it, just like not, uh, not interested. Like I don't know if, uh, we weren't going to talk about it for this show that I would have really like picked it up or cared about it at all. And so what I'm about to say, I want to say with a caveat that like, I do not play a lot of mobile games, and I do not anticipate that in a few weeks I will be playing a lot of this game. Yeah. But that being said, I enjoyed this more than I think uh, um, than any of the other three Nintendo mobile yeah. games, including Super Mario Run. Um, so I love Super Mario Run. So I won't make that claim. Yeah, I, th- I thought Super Mario Run was, like, was fun. It was worth the $10, I'm, for sure. Yeah, you, that's... <laughs> 
<laughs> it's uh, I'm not I'm not attacking you, Mark. <laughs> I, I feel you, attacked. I want you to know that I hear everything. I'm furious. <laughs> um, I also sort of really like this game. Um, and I'm not totally sure I know why. It feels the most to me. It feels the most fun. Yes. And the most polished uh-huh. of any of them. Like it has uh more of like the Nintendo quality that I would expect from a game with Nintendo's uh name on it than again like Animal Crossing for sure. Um I would even say like Mario. I love the designs in these games. Yeah, me Cuz the like chibi versions of them of like all the characters are really fun. It has a lot of voice acting. And, like, the voice acting is fun. Like, some of the deliveries of the line. The uh, personalities of all the individual characters, which I feel like is something that, for me, was really missing from Fire Emblem Heroes. Yeah. Where it's just like, ah, yes, another, like, um, busty anime babe who's well, so, speaking in some, like, uh, yeah, some, like you know, high early food, modern yeah. English. Well, and so that's, that's where uh, I think this game has to distinguish itself from Fire Emblem Heroes because um, it needs to sell you on the, on the personalities of all these characters where Fire Emblem, they are like a greatest hits of characters from Fire Emblem already. Then they, that's where their characters are expressed. So when you meet Krom in Fire Emblem Heroes, you're like, oh, sweet, Krom. But when you meet, you know, uh, any character in <laughs> Dragalia Lost, you don't know who they are until the game like introduces you to them. And, um, you know, you can encounter characters either, uh, you know, as you play the game or as part of like the, the random polls. Yeah, the, the summon system. Um, and then no matter what, every character has like their own series of like just character stories of like interacting with your like main band of like story heroes. Um, and so, yeah, I've, I've loved like getting to know the personalities of these characters, which is also like super evident just in like their designs and like their avatars. Like um, I, I pulled really early, maybe in my first um, like big summon, a, a character named Vanessa who is a uh, fire type um, Viking warrior um, who's like hard drinking and hard fighting. And she carries uh, like in her avatar drawing, she's uh, holding a beer stein with a cat on it. <laughs> she's awesome. And I love her. Um, I'm also just like impressed by like, I love the music in this game. Yeah, it's nice. I think the music's great. Mm-hmm. I, uh, it, a lot of it has, is like J pop. Oh yeah. Um, but it works great, and I love listening to it. Yeah, uh, yeah, yes. The the sound in the game is is great. Like you said, the acting is, if not good, uh, at least like feels appropriate. It's for like what fun. It is. Yeah, and uh, um, talking about like that, those little like nin- details that I associate with like a Nintendo game, like a thoughtful design. Uh, when you're on the home screen, or even when you're like looking at your team, there's like the music playing. And everybody is like swaying or bopping or, you know, like walking in yeah. time to the music. And it's just like little things like that that make it feel like a more thought through product. Yeah. Well, and the, the game is doing just a lot of like sort of just persistent uh, like storytelling. And, you know, even if it's not like super active, like you say from the home screen, you'll either see like your characters walking together or like hanging out at a campsite or whatever. And it's the characters that you're, you know, most recently used. Um, or like if you're, if you've been uh, playing in co-op missions, like the one character that you're like sending out on those things. Um, yeah. It, it just, it, it feels like there's a lot of care put into how these guys are presented and like how you see them and what you see all the time. So um, I think I've talked about on the show before how I don't really care about uh stories in video games for the most part yeah um so one thing i and i have been skipping these cutscenes left and right yeah like do not care right um the story i can still follow it right because one thing that they it's pretty that they, clear well also in that they mm-hmm. implement here that i really appreciate is when you skip a cutscene, it just gives you a summary yeah <laughs> it's just like okay here's what went down you're like that's all i needed right that's perfect that is perfect for me i wish more games did this yeah or it's like let me skip the cutscene. give me a little modal that's just like here's the two lines that you need to know that's actually important about like 
what's happening here. Right. Because as far as like the actual dungeon crawling goes in this game, the plot means nothing. Right. Has no bearing at all. I mean, the I, I do think that they... Uh, the the how how far are you in this game? I'm I'm at the end of chapter three right now. I'm ab- uh, right about there. Okay. Um. So the the game you know does like it it has like aspirations towards this like huge uh you know it's a kingdom and like there is like a time maybe time travel involved and like an evil version of the king and uh the an empire has taken over the kingdom and. You know, there are alliances between men and dragons that are being, like, betrayed or reforged <laughs> or, like, who even knows, right? Um, and early in the game, you're just sort of, like, going about and, like, this is where I am now is uh, sort of, like, reestablishing these, uh, like, connections to, you know, the great fire dragon and the great water dragon and all these things. Um, so, like, it, I, I, w- I won't go so far as to say that I don't care about the story. But like it's a it's a very rote story, right? Like you like yes, I'm on the quest now to like get with this dragon or like save these uh you know forest people or whatever. Um, and just having that like sort of uh like base understanding of what they're doing and which you you know point out you can get from just like these like quick little descriptions of what the scene is about. Um, I feel like invested in the world, if not the narrative necessarily. One thing we haven't talked about at all is like the castle town management yeah. aspect of this game. Um, basically, it's like a mini uh, man. I don't even know what you'd compare it to, like Sim City. Yeah, like a, a little bit of like a, a a sort of Sim scenario where you're like building things uh, to you know just get more resources to build more things, <laughs> and sometimes it uh, you know you're building like altars to improve the stats on some of your characters um i have a dragon fruit tree which will produce fruit that i can then offer to a dragon to improve my relationship with it um yeah every every one of the like two complicated systems in this game can be used to like feed another too complicated system (laughs) um which is it's very attractive to me it is and i think it's like one of the things that differentiates this from say Animal Crossing Pocket Camp. Yeah. Which, you know, I love Animal Crossing. I should be in the bag for that game. Totally. But um, it's so sterile and transaction-based, right? Like, there's nothing that makes me want to go back to Animal Crossing Pocket Camp. Yeah. Um, Because it's just like, well, I can pick up some fruit for some of these guys so I can make like a t-shirt or whatever. Right. But it's not like this where it's like, okay, um, I'm going to go into Drag- Dragalia Lost. Maybe I don't want to play the story. I can go into the uh, like castle mode or I can just do a couple of the co-op events and it's going to take like a minute and a half. Yeah. I'm just going to run through, like do this real fast. Oh, I got some stuff. Let me go and like improve somebody's like mana circle or whatever it's called. Oh, every day I get a free, like, um, I get free items and I get a free, like, let me see, like, what new character I get and all this kind of stuff. Right. You get, I mean, and it's all like, it's all just little stuff you have to check in on, right? Like, every time you go into the game, you're like, well, every new day, you're like, okay, um, I, I get just awarded something for showing up this day. And then you're like, oh, I can do, I can do my free item summon. I can do that once a day. Um, and like, oh, I got to check in on my castle and like do that. So there's so much in any given day, like just to check on. Um, and that's before you're even like playing, playing the it. game. Yeah. And if you just wanted to like hop in and do like, I'm just going to do like one of those things and then I'm done, you know, like I don't have time or I don't really want to like run through it. Like each, uh, there are different ones that can be rewarding on its own. Yeah. Um, which feels different from any of the other uh, Nintendo mobile games. Yeah. Well, and it also does, uh, it doesn't do the thing where you are restricted, like from doing the next thing by uh, time or money, right? Like there's no point in the game where you're like, ah, um, I want to keep going, but I have to either spend $5 or, um, you know, wait for three hours for something to respawn or whatever. Yeah, there is a stamina system. Uh, what is that? Because I've never, <laughs> I like right now my stamina, hold on, I'm going to pull it up. Mine's 48 out of 24. 
mine is 114 out of 29. I don't know what that means. <laughs> like, does your stamina go up or go down? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't no, know I what no it idea. is. Um, and what happens when your stamina reaches zero? I, Anything? I don't know. Maybe you have to buy more stamina. But that's what I'm saying is that like it. Uh, I've never hit a point where it's like, man, they're really trying to get me to spend money on these microtransactions, which again, Animal Crossing Pocket Camp, you would run into that all, all the, time. the time. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I totally agree. And like, there's nothing that the game offers you, even the, uh, like the, the summoning uh, ritual, which is sort of like the blind draw, um, that like, it's, you can do that by uh, spending the uh, currency, which, what is it? It's like diamond something. Hold on, I'm pulling it up right now. Oh, the one you have to buy? Yeah, uh, Diam- Diamantium. Um, you can either do it with Diamantium or with uh, worm- Wormite, which is like the most common thing that you encounter in the game. So like they give you um, a lot of, they give you a lot of a resource that is very similar to the premium uh, currency. Um, so like I have, I have yet to f- even like feel like, oh, it would be nice to, to do that. Because like even when you do this this the ten summon ritual, which I get excited about every time I do it, um, but like it doesn't change what you're doing necessarily. You just like I occasionally get another character that I'm interested in, um, but usually it's like just a bunch of dragons I don't really care about, or like here's some resource, and I'm like okay, fine. Um, like it doesn't it doesn't feel like that is the uh, like the reason for playing is you know collecting new characters. The characters you have and the characters you encounter throughout the course of the game are fun and useful enough as they are. And there are certain uh, like ceilings that you run into, um, like in the co-op missions. Yeah, your team has to have like a certain might yes. level. And if you haven't been playing for that long, or you don't, you know, you have a lot of like two star or three star people on your team, you're not going to hit that like. 3,000, 3,500, 5,000, like, might level yeah. in order to get that. And so that, in a way, is, like, an incentive to get you to try to um, get better characters. But it never feels, at least I have not up to this point, felt like uh, things were putting being put behind, like, a money barrier. Yeah. Well, and, the, like, because there are also so many different workarounds for having characters of sort of, you know, of like lower star characters that have lower might on their own, because as discussed, you can upgrade their mana circle, which will up, uh, increase their might. You can upgrade weapons. You can upgrade their worm prints. You can upgrade the dragons that they're associated with. And all of that ups their might. Um, so like, even if you have a character who's not a five star character, you can, they can be related to all of these other things that can be upgraded to higher levels. So like, if you like a character, you can use them. One thing we haven't talked about at all, and I actually think it's um, pretty telling for how I've been, the aspects of the game that I've been enjoying and the aspects of the game that uh, aren't necessarily bad, but I just don't care that much about. Yeah. Uh, we haven't talked about like the actual like combat or any of that stuff at all. Yeah. I mean, I think it's pretty clear for the fact that they have like an auto battle option that here's the thing i don't trust the auto battle (laughs) option i i i'm always hands-on um especially because if you put it on like auto battle and uh you start fighting those guys that have like guard up and you need to like hit them with a heart attack um the characters won't do the like uh, the so you have to like go in and like actually make them do where you like hold the attack button and then like aim it and release um so I'm always like, no, 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 I'm just gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna manage this. Well, also each like dungeon run is very short. Oh yeah, so short. Um, so like I, you know, I, I, I like to be engaged through the course of it. Um, and especially in in like a co-op run, um, because like I like to see what everyone else is up to and like react to that. Uh, because sometimes, so it, I, we haven't talked about this either, but like the you can just jump in with randos. And see, uh, you know, someone opens up a room and it's you and three other people just going through a, a little bit of a dungeon together. And you can do this with any dungeon that you encounter. Um, and uh, yeah, so like the, they'll be running for the boss. And I'm like, well, hold on. I want to get this treasure chest over here because <laughs> um, otherwise people just book it right for the boss. But that's I don't know. That's that's very 
it's fun and like you're relying on other people, but also not in a like way that you actually need to communicate or anything. Um, but it, yeah, it's just sort of like fun to kind of get their backs together. Now, one thing I have not played, and I'm actually not sure if it's out yet, is that they are going to be doing like raid type. Um, Tell me more about this dungeons. That's pretty much the extent of what I know. Like with uh, a, it has a bunch of yet. people, or I'm not sure, know. or if it's just like four people but like a longer more involved um type dungeon yeah the other, the other like kind of like co-op aspect of it is which is like asynchronous co-op is the i think it's called like the hero system so basically you um helper a helper yeah yeah so basically like when you are um starting a mission you have the option of bringing a helper with you which is just like gives you a random maybe list of other people's like starting characters. Well, for, first it shows you your friends uh-huh. uh, that that you've made in the game um, that are putting up a character that is relevant to because at the beginning of uh, of any mission it shows you what like the main enemy type is and the game has sort of two systems. There's like one rock paper scissors kind of triangle and then one just like binary that light fights dark and dark fights light. I don't really know how that how <laughs> one shows an advantage over the other, but you know whatever. Um, but then yeah, it'll give you like a couple different options, and you can either get a friend's helper or a random person's helper. And if it's a friend's helper, you can use that helper ability three times. Oh. And if it's a rando helper, then you can only use it once. And at the end, after you've like used, if it's a random person, then at the end you have the option of sending them a friend request. Yep. And um, now I have like f- six or seven friends on my uh, friend list. Uh, I currently have seventeen friends. Um, out of it looks like we can only have twenty nine friends. Yeah, well, so I think you start out with twenty five, and it mm. it increases. Oh, like as as you level up. Uh huh. Um, what what level are you right now? What level is your? Uh, I don't know. I'm player? not super high. Four maybe. Oh, I'm I'm nine. You and I should you we should be friends before we fill up our, <laughs> our, our friends list. Um, oh, Mark, what what else what else do we have to talk about in this game? I I cannot believe how much I like this. Yeah, like I said, um, like I'm really caught off guard here. <laughs> by I, by I far, don't know what to do. The most I have enjoyed from uh, these Nintendo mobile games, I like the aesthetic. Uh, I like the characters. I think, like, I like all the different characters I have to choose from. I think the writing is clever. Yep. Um, they all have like really fun personality. Um, I haven't met one yet that I'm like, oh brother. Right. Well, and also the well, uh, the characters all have um like anime designs. There are none of them are that are as embarrassingly busty as like. Uh, Fire Emblem character, Fire Emblem Heroes characters, or even just those same characters in regular Fire Emblem games. Right, and also they have, every, all of them have like, the ones that you're actually using in the game are like cute, cute chibi versions. Yeah, yeah, and then like actual like just sort of more like a- anime uh, versions of them, but like I like both, and I can clearly see how like each one of them relates to each other. Um, and yeah, I don't know, like I'm I'm just scrolling through it now, looking at like my the various teams that i have set up and i'm just like yeah i just i just like it i just think it's cool to look at the characters um so yeah i don't know what what what, how you you mentioned before that you don't know if you're going to be like playing this in another like week or whatever i mean that's just kind of like the reality of i don't really play mobile games yeah outside of when we're going to be talking about it for the show like um but you know, a few weeks ago, I was at work a lot, and when I had a little bit of downtime, I was um, opening up Pocket Camp again, and I would definitely yeah, go to Dragalia this. Lost yeah. versus any of the other games that had come before. Yeah, um, I I do find, uh, and especially like um, the this weekend where I, I feel like I was on uh, social media a lot, just like kind of scrolling through you know hope hopelessly looking for uh, updates on like any of the terrible things that are happening in the world um and uh i was just like no you know what i can use at any time i can stop this and use my phone for something that's just fun (laughs) um and that that's that's nice it's nice to have a good like fun escape thing on the phone um but uh should point out 
uh, for my joke at the top of the show, it does drain your battery, drains it hard, um, to the point where I spent most of the weekend with my phone plugged <laughs> plugged into like a, a separate battery. It also like requires a lot of yeah, uh, like mini downloads. So at the beginning of every mission, pretty right? much, or yeah. anytime you like, because uh, in addition to the main missions, there are also like s- just pure story missions, and for each like character that you get, yeah, and they have multiple story missions, and their story expands the more that you get into the game, and yeah, all and those each require one is like a download, yeah, yeah, and you know they're not big; they're usually like three megabytes or something like that. Um. But, but it means you do need to be connected and you, you using data. Yeah. Right. And so, like, it would add up a lot. I actually realized uh, when we were getting ready for this that I had played the entire weekend on my tablet on my um, iPad Pro. And oh. I really liked that. This was the first time that I had put it, linked it to my phone. So, <laughs> um, oh, that's nice. I bet that's great. Very spacious for like when you're like swiping and running oh, around yeah. in dungeons like, and everything. Oh yeah, you dodge. Yeah, luxurious. You all the way over here. <laughs> um, Mark, do you have any uh, like hopes for the future of this game? Do you think that there is like a, a future for the franchise of Dragalia Lost? At least like for you, would you welcome seeing this somewhere else, uh, like on on Switch or 3DS? I think for me, more than anything, this makes me excited for. The relationship, like the partnership between Nintendo and um, Psy Games, yeah, because I really like uh, enjoyed my time with Dragalia Lost more than I was expecting to, and um, I am excited to see like what happens between them in the future. Yep, um, and I will agree with that one hundred percent. All right, Mark, let's close out our thoughts here on Dragalia Lost. But of course, we're not the only people playing this game. You might be playing it too. You can download it for free on your phone. Um, And then we'd love to hear how everyone else is experiencing this game. Um, I don't know if people are listening to this uh, that were like, there's no way I'm going to play that game. It sounds stupid. And now they're like, what? Patrick and Mark like it? (laughs) Um, Like, I'm just, I'm wondering what the reaction is. Because I was surprised that I was enjoying this as much as I was. Uh, But if you want to write in, let us know. Uh, how you're liking it? Nintendo Cartridge Society at, at gmail dot com, uh, and that's uh, Mark. What do you say? Going to do it for this episode? Yeah, I think I so. Think it's going to do it. If you enjoyed the episode, please rate, review, subscribe on Apple Podcasts. Um, that sort of stuff helps us out tremendously. And if you could share this episode with someone you know who might like Dragalia Lost or might like Mark and I talking about Dragalia Lost. That would be great. Again, helps us out tremendously. You can follow us on Twitter. I'm at Patrick underscore Ellers. Mark is at MKE Mitchell. And the show is at Nincart Society. We are also on Facebook. And you know how to use Facebook. Uh, if you like Mark and Mind's opinions, we write about comic books on RecomPunch.com. Olivia Duncan made our logo. Our theme music is provided by Ape at Betty. If you would like more of that, you can go to apeatbetty.com or you can listen right now. From my co-host, Mark Mitchell, this is Patrick Eller saying thank you for listening. I'm Max Lasser, the host of The Calories, a three-episode podcast miniseries about making weight loss easier. After I lost 100 pounds by calorie counting in 2015, I started to realize why the way I was doing it before, just eating healthy and exercising, wasn't working for me. The podcast features experts from Mount Sinai Hospital, Mayo Clinic, and more, and you can check it out from Campfire Media on Apple Podcasts or wherever podcasts are found. Campfire.